really, what's the business of sports like before we get down to specifics? Well, um, I'll start by saying that sports generally brings out the best in individuals, team, self-worth, confidence and stuff like that. And um, there's heritage, communion, association and team spirit, you know, the achievement and the success. And of course, when you lose, you know how your spirit is drowned and mm -hmm. all that. Now with all these, football specifically becomes a passion for a lot of people. And if I'm not wrong, the biggest sporting activity in the world. Now, we understand some of these things by the fact that because it's a fa uh, passion, it drives a lot of aspirations of people. Mm -hmm. Now, brands alike would share in these same values of football and sport, and so they they rather would want to associate with sports or football for that matter to connect with their consumers. Now, the business around it, you, I can't remember you mentioned some big icons that um, sports brands like Puma, Adidas, you know, associate with. And because they know that these are people that look people, um, these are stars that are, you know, people look up to, mm -hmm. you know, drive their aspirations and all that. They know if I connect my brand to it, I, I immediately connect to my customers and consumers because you aspire to be like them and all that. Mm -hmm. And I would love to wear a tie that, you know, somebody I aspire to be like, you know, would wear and all that. So those associations, mm -hmm. it creates a perfect mix for brands you know, to meet their consumers and customers. Mm. Of course, bring sports and football also bring togetherness. We all appreciate the fact that when it's football time, politics and everything go, go down. You know, the whole place is calm, people bond with each other and all that. You know, bring some serene atmosphere, environment which thrives for business as well. And so brands take an opportunity of some of these things, you know, to express their core values and also reach out to their consumers. So basically, these are some of the business opportunities around sports. I'll stay with you for good reason because I really want us to go. We'll take, we have an insight that we'll take from AFCON. Uh, before we get, when we start getting down to AFCON, then of course the two other gentlemen will also get in a little more. But on the theoretical side of things, I'd like to stay with you a bit. Yeah. Because there's a new concept in uh, business and sports known as uh, what it draws from something they call proximity in time and space. Proximity in time and space reference of the fact that in modern times, a person at home actually may have a better view of events on a sports arena than a person who pays to go to the stadium. Simply because they may deploy 30 to 40 cameras, depending on how big the event is. Mm -hmm. And if you are in a stand in your particular seat, your view is locked mm -hmm. to what you can get. Mm -hmm. And you cannot even see an athlete warming up, if it's the Olympic Games, for example, because mm -hmm. the, the tracks for warming up is different from the main arena. Mm -hmm. And you may not be able to catch it. You will actually will also need a screen to see. And people at home are able to see all of these things. The buses that drive teams to play the World Cup matches, African Nations Cup matches, if it's properly sponsored, it's one brand. Mm -hmm. and in Germany, 2006 was a particular brand. I think I don't, I don't intend to advertise it, yeah. but that is what it was. And um, even the signages in the stadium, mm -hmm. the t-shirts that are done out of it, the caps and the caps, the both of them, souvenirs, etc., and all those things, are major, major, major opportunities that arise when these things occur. Yeah. Do you think that we? really understand the dynamics of these issues, particularly since we hosted Cannes 2008, and not many Ghanaians seem to have benefited from that. Well, there are peculiarities, of course, with the environment or which country is hosting and <laughs> all that. But without a doubt, we've also seen how Ghanaians were able to really milk or take opportunity, take advantage of the opportunities that you know these platforms present, uh -huh. i.e. Um, AFCON 2008. Uh -huh. You know, we, we invested in stadia, we invested in a lot of um, sports infrastructure and all that. But Which was cost. Yes, it's cost. But then, trust me, the feel at the stadium is definitely not the same, with, I mean, irrespective of the technology that we deploy in covering it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there are people who would love to go there, mm -hmm. who would love to see the ambience, the stadium feel and all. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you are at home, Technology also gives you the opportunity to express the same thing through other means, yeah. you understand? So the creativity that is expressed around the coverage and all that comes in. Yeah. But then, without a doubt, brands are like also realize that, look, on the ground, people would want to come there. So you see all the panels, the billboards, and the you know um, logo placement behind the ticket and all that. At the same time, they also realize that there are some fans who stay at home and watch television. So they create presence there as well. They take advantage on, I mean, business, the entertainment side of sports, the fun part, the music part of it. 
Now, if you look at a lot of um, sports magazines, some even cameramen, some production, just take you know closer look at the uh, the inside and around the tournament itself. Mm -hmm. Some are just also focus on the matches, the analysis, and all that. Some, I mean, there are diverse ways of expressing these things. I mean, typically, multi-TV, if we go into the coverage, we express the AFCON in different ways. Uh -huh. We had the diaries, we had the inside AFCON, which, of course, um, my colleagues will throw more light on. As much as possible, you know, you just have to differentiate and also make sure you are giving your audience the best. At the stadium on ground, we were there. Even on television, we tried to take our content outdoor to express it, give opportunity for people who do not even have our boxes or whatever it is to share and also to tell them what we have. And then on set, it was just exciting watching Afcon on TV, given the graphics that our post-production you know, guys put on it and all that. So as much as possible, wherever the opportunity, you just make sure you give your audience whatever, you know, give them the thrilling experience that we've always promised. Fred, let me throw you into the pool of preliminary, so to speak, before we get down to uh, the things that you deal with. Uh, basically, because I know you also have quite an extensive uh, 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 interest and experience in all these uh, marketing affairs. Not too long ago, I mean, everybody was talking about a game in the US. Big. Everyone wanted to watch it. It's impossible to, to have the biggest stadium in the world. Won't take more than a little over 100,000 people, I think, when you start talking about 120,000 there about and uh, we have millions of people following such events so basically there's an attraction that comes out there before we start zeroing on how we use the benefit of it we couldn't have gone to Gabon most of us couldn't have been in Equatorial yeah. Guinea it's impossible and yet multi TV carried it and all what was the business representation in that basically for us and um, in showing it being head of sports and carrying it and all of that what was the business dimension to that event, which was the reason why I said us supposed to really wanted to see it, have it on your network? Uh, thank you, Ni. Um, I think basically, like my Ben mentioned earlier, the, uh, football is something that is the most passionate sport followed anywhere in the world. Uh, some people may dispute when you go to other countries, yeah. who, like uh, India and Pakistan. I know, because they when they put up cricket, when they, we, we, we put cricket side by side with football, the, in, the Indians alone have yeah. been over a billion people. That's the thing. They can smother the football population. Yeah. When you come back home to Ghana, <laughs> right. there's no competition when it comes to football. Absolutely. And then the primary factor for us at Multi TV is the fact that we provide value for both our viewers and then the business side of it, our sponsors. Um, AFCON, uh, this time around, um, because definitely the big teams, mm. Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, were not there, and Cameroon. Mm. So everybody had that aspiration that, yes, this time, it's an opportunity for Ghana to win okay. this trophy after so long. So it was extra interest in it. And the fact that it wasn't taking place in Ghana, mm. and Gabon, Equatorial Guinea had an extra attraction right. for them. And because of the fact that, at least uh, a lot of people were looking forward to the event, plus the fact that, you know, definitely when these things come around, sponsors also jump on board. Mm. So it, was, it behoved on us, we had a two-pronged uh, objective, one, to give something that will satisfy our viewers and also to create a platform, a vehicle, mm. for sponsors to also latch onto. Mm. So mm. for me, um, and I think for the team at Multi TV, it was something that by all means, other stations, we're not going to stand by and get, let other stations take what we knew everybody wanted. Okay. So it was like a, not necessarily a free for all per se, because the circumstances surrounding how we even got the, uh, the rights, it was a long drawn out, uh, uh, um, I wouldn't say struggle, but um, that was that's, that's, let me, for want of a better word, okay. before we got on the eve even of the commencement of the event. Right. But no, because we knew what we wanted, we had already pre-planned to make sure we insert a team on ground in Gabon. Mm. And then we even went there ahead of the tournament. Mm. And then, and then um, one of the key things is that even when the team arrived in Gabon, mm. we were already there. Mm. We're the only TV station in Gabon from Ghana. Right. We're at the airport. When the vice president also got there to visit the team, we were there. Mm. You know, like you said, this is just the beginning. So, mm. I mean, there, there is, is an aspirational thing for viewers mm. to want to see our boys in action okay. away from Ghana. Right. Plus, sponsors also need a vehicle to push their brands. Okay. And football is the biggest platform you can get anywhere. Okay. So that's the kind of thing that we considered in just deciding to go for it. Kwame, you were on the ground. You were down there. And um, basically, all that McBain has said, all that Fred has said, we're, we're right at the back of what really is put out. What did you see? What did you show? 
Well, um, we got there, you know, having read, you know, a few bits about, you know, both countries. We knew we were going to be stationing in the, um, Gabon for the first two weeks, and then mm -hmm. depending on how far we went, right. we were probably going to be moving around a bit. So we had, you know, our own ideas and parameters as to what exactly we we're going to look out for when we touch ground. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I recall on the 19th of January, it was somewhere around 6 p.m. when we touched down in Libreville, having That's traveled. two days before kickoff. Two days before kickoff, you right. know, having traveled to, um, it was uh, Lomé, uh, Kotulu, um before Libreville, right. and then we got in there, and then you know the first person you meet at the stadium, um, at the you know airport when you you you're done with all the traveling bits, is no other person than Marcel Desai. Right. You know he pops up from nowhere, and you're asking yourself, oh, it's going to be interesting. What on earth is he doing here? Right. And then you see all the billboards around town when we're driving mm -hmm. to a hotel. You know the bars is there, the feel is there, and then you know all of a sudden you get yourself into that into that spirit that hey, you're in here for business. You're in here to see a lot lot of things you know happening around the sport and you just want to bring out nothing but the best to your viewer in here at home so that kind of like you know got us into the mood where you're looking around and saying there is no TV house in here there's a chance bring to Ghanaians what no one else will probably you know bring to them and for us it was a lot of fun great I think it's a good point to take some of the things that you brought to Ghanaians because we actually have an insight uh, of, a, of a very interesting interview as someone Jan uh, interviewing Ajuman Bedu and some supporters jubilating and all of that. If it's ready, I think it's a good time for us to take that. Um, I hope. All right, let's watch this. Stay with us. We'll be back. I mean, I'm not too sure they even thought they were going to get this far. Winning all three group matches and, and, and going thus far, they, they stand a very good chance, if you ask me, of making it to at least the quarter-final stage of the competition. They are up against um, the second... Hi, this is, this is Multi TV, your co-presenter, Jana Samoa, a.k.a. Baby Jet. You know, we, we have um, Ajiman Bedu from the Black Stars. He's wearing the normal H shirt for the Black Stars, and uh, we, we are here to discuss about how the camp is going and everything. Welcome, welcome to my program. Thank you, boss. Yeah. How, how you doing? doing? Good, man. You? Yeah, first of all, um, tell me about the camp. How is the camp going? I think everything is fine. Uh, cohesion is uh, going well. Every, everyone is feeling good. And yeah, everything is on course. We are looking forward on Sunday. Oh, okay. Um, so far, um, how do you see the tournament? You know, talking about the Gabonese, you know, everything is going well. But how do you see the tournament in general? Uh, everything is fine. The tournament is going on well. Uh, one thing I don't like is the supporters don't come as much as. That's what you, some of the events uh, during AFCON 2012. Of course, uh, you saw the interview, you saw some of the fans jubilating from other countries, and also the ever present Asamoa Jan, the third highest all time leading scorer for Ghana. I bet a lot of people don't know that because you remember him more for wastefulness than anything else. But Abedi Pele has 33 goals to his name, Tony Yeboa 29, Asamoa Jan has 28. One to catch Tony Yeboa for all time. And a few to catch Abede Pele. If he comes back like he says he would, he probably in a few years will be Ghana's leading scorer. But Ben, so let's get down to it and ask you, really, how, what shape did it take in terms of business in AFCON 2012? Fred has given us a background. Kwame has told us quite a bit of what he did on the ground and all of that. What 
how did that reflect in your business? The business reflection was quite exciting. I mean, though you can understand the investment that goes into acquiring sports franchises and properties, yep. you know, and um, of course there are few brands in Ghana who have the, you know, the capacity to really associate with these properties and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Now, the other interesting thing is the fact that m most of our, uh, the television stations in, in, in Ghana were also covering the AFCON. They were actually showing the AFCON, but right. we had to take a strategy, a business strategy. How do we, you know, differentiate to give our audience some spectacular, you know, coverage? So at Multi TV, our promise has always been um, giving our audience a thrilling television experience. So we came up with the idea of the inside Afcon, the diaries, the pretty much discussion that you know assembled major pundits of football to discuss it. Now the brand association is the, um, we express them in different and different creative ways. We had squeeze back, which usually you would see on um, DSTV, mm -hmm. you know. It was one thing that we've also made sure we make it popular to really communicate our sponsors or our brand's aspirations. So unlike where you see your regular logo slapped on, on screen, sometimes it distorts, you know, the set and all that. What we do is occasional squeeze back where we push the picture on a little and then we show the communication of our sponsors. Right. We also had the regular spot advertising, which we did and live mentioned and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we also tried to really take the activity closer to the people. So we did that through various activations that we did. At, I think um, I remember we did one for, um, um, Stambik Bank at Alisa. Okay. They invited their um, um, their VIP customers, so we sh we give them a great you know viewing giant screen experience with some you know cocktail and stuff like that. We also did one at Aviation Social Center, you know with Guinness RLG, you know where you were watching the match and join it with your ice cold Guinness. We we did this to apart from just um, playing their ads to give the experiential bit of marketing, you know, to, to, to our sponsors as right. well. We did so many other things that brought value to our audience and then our sponsors. Great. Fred, you were the only TV uh, station there, as you've already told us. Yes. But of course, as Mark Benner said, other stations were showing the events, and you needed to make yourself different. From the marketing side of things, he's given us what was different. From the sports side of things, as head of sports, what did you do differently? I think the, the catchphrase there for us was behind the scenes. Mm. We just wanted to make sure, like I said initially, to insert a team on ground so that it would bring us the ambience around the event itself. Because uh, if it wasn't for our team there, <clears throat> we wouldn't have been able to see the team put their head down. Mm. In camp, training, even pre training, when they really joke around and you know, kind of uh, pussyfoot and you know, uh, tease each other and just make sure at least that kind of uh, uh, camaraderie within camp is also shown to Ghanaians. For at least the Ghanaians who know that at least there's unity in camp. Beyond that, I think there were a lot of press conference and all that. I think Kwame Ugo did into that. But the, the, the major rationale was the fact that we also wanted to be on ground to make sure that apart from what we are seeing on air, the trump card that we also held. The firepower we carried into the marketplace for the AFCON was the fact that we were on ground, we were doing behind the scenes. And they did not just limit themselves to probably pre and post match uh, discussions, uh, uh, what do you call it, interviews. Because definitely some of those things could be gotten from the, some of the international networks that I'm sure some other stations were picking and using. But we were on ground actually to ensure that even, uh, I think they got in, even interviews with uh, some uh, uh, coaches and personalities who were not necessarily Ghanaian, some officials of other teams. So as much as is possible, when you are on ground, the team is embarking, uh, they are going on uh, just before the match, during the match, the kind of things they experience and all those things. After the match, when adrenaline, just even before the adrenaline goes down, right, there are certain things that they feel that they will express so that at least Ghanaians back home will know and these were the things that were happening to our team there. At least, you know, you, there's a certain connection that you create that people would even kind of uh, have this affinity with the team. Not only what they do on the pitch, but at least the human side of the team behind the scenes. 
you know, and then uh, I must also uh, say that I'm sure Kwame will address that, that we are very grateful for a Ghanaian individual who is a leader of the Ghanaian community there in Gabon, mm -hmm. who met them when the team initially arrived, hosted them, and really uh, um, showed that he is a Ghanaian who's met Ghanaians outside right. Ghana. So uh, as much as is possible, uh, even before we, 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 it was a two point, while we were looking for the broadcast rights, at the same time also preparing and making sure that regardless of anything that happens, we'll still send a team there. You know, so the preparation stage and all that, while we were going through the, the, the motions of negotiating, because like you said, all other stations were also chasing it right. at that time. I'm sure we didn't also know what they were planning. So what we were doing was for us for our viewers, for our sponsors, because definitely the one you're going to go to the sponsors and then give them a package. Everybody's going to do a premier discussion. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to do the live broadcast, post-mart discussion. Sure. What else? Sure. We are not going to do what everybody was going to do f by taking uh, snippets of uh, um, uh, what you call video from international networks and then using it for updates. Mm -hmm. We actually decided that, look, let's do behind the scenes that we drive, we create it the way we want it and offer it uh, for uh, our sponsors, so that at least the viewers is customized for our viewers and our sponsors. Mm. That was that was it. Yeah. Uh, what the reason, the rationale behind the things. So it was a behind the scenes thing. Okay, let's yeah. take some quick messages right now. Yeah. Mumuni Rashid, all the way in Yendi, says, "I think Multi TV played a big role in the just ended Afcon 2012 or 2012. It's very clear you have gained too much fame as a result of the time you devoted to the tournament. It is through this media that I got to know how Ghanaians were desperate to win the cup." How our boys were faring and preparing at the camp. It's quite unfortunate that we could not make it to the finals. Anyway, okay, all right, I just get half of your message. I'm sure the rest of it will come. But your point is quite made, and I'm sure uh, even without looking to the left side of the table, I can, I can, I can send smiles all over in that part. Augustine, uh, Augustine Songme, I hope I'm pronouncing your name well, says, Ni, you are hurting me with these footages of the Black Stars. They only see Jamal doing in training. <laughs> Check the videos. <laughs> Augustine, that's the name of the game. That's the, the name of the sport. How many times has the almighty Brazil participated in the World Cup? How many times have they won it? You can't win it all the time. But of course, we all hope and wish that we can do it. We have an opportunity next year. It's coming very fast. Irresistible Nathaniel Boachi says, the best sports brand in Ghana is Castro and Baby Jetta Samoa. Okay, all right. Thank you for sending us that view and um, Augustine sends another one says let's not talk about the revenue generation aspect of the tournament the expenditure like the black stars chopping our millions of dollars without bringing the cap home should be considered all is business revenue that's income expenditure profit they should refund the gargantuan money <laughs> I can't I can't believe this the players should refund the money all right, okay. We hear you. Let's see if we have another one here very quickly. Okay, all right. So those will be the text messages uh, for now. We'll, we'll get into it. I'll come over to you, Kwame, at some point, but I want to go back to McBen and ask him, would you say that your sponsors are happy with you? Let me give you um, one testimony I got from one of our sponsors, Channel IT. Okay. Um, they are the... Um, regional distributors for um, Dell computers. Okay. And, you know, I was there one day when you called me and said, ah, what number did you put on the ad that you use? Mm. And I asked, ah, why? He said, ah, I, anytime, every five minutes, I get calls from all <laughs> over the place. Somebody called me from, you know, so he said, and he spoke in vernacular, my computer is saying. Wow. You know, that's, that, that, that really made me appreciate how wide our coverage is and of course what values we're, we're getting because you you just simply think that oh for computers you are talking to Accra and mm -hmm. stuff like that but mm -hmm. you know we covered the tournament so great we also made sure we gave exciting content mm -hmm. you know to to our consumers or our audiences that it reflected in our, our sponsors you know business again for brands like RLG, Stan Big Bank, mm -hmm. and all that, feedback I'm getting from them that it was great. It was good doing business with us. Of course, we create you know such platforms to connect with our audience at the same time, delivering those platform audiences to these advertisers to mm -hmm. connect with them. Mm -hmm. The feedback was so far so good, and they are willing to do other things with us. We are already in discussions for other great tournaments that are coming up, which we keep under our sleeves for now. 
Fred, would you like to mention some sponsors? I've had Stambeck, I've had Guinness, I've had RLG. Uh, you mentioned Channel, uh, IT, Channel IT. Rob as well. Rob? Yeah. Oh, okay. I see. So those will be the sponsors. Well, uh, basically, uh, for me, uh, usually we leave the business of the sponsors to McBen. Mm. What we need to do is to make sure that he has a good enough product right. to go out there okay. and sell. Right. I just want to make a comment uh, on one of the... Um, the text the messages that you read. Okay. To the fact that we <coughs> cannot do without sponsors. He's, he's talking about don't award the business side of things or something. Yes. We cannot do without the business side of things when we are doing these things because they are the people who carry us back and forth. Mm. I'm sure if uh, we are to compute the cost in terms of uh, um, human resource, logistics, even uh, um, uh, what do you call it, making sure the team that even went to AFCON, well, that was a separate budget from what we did in-house mm. here. Then the, the, the amount of uh, logistics that you collated mm. for even their own uh, sales pitch and all those things. Mm. When you mentioned the figure, somebody who said, are you sure? Right. But the need to cover those things is the reason why the sponsors will come on board. It's a mutual win-win situation. Right. They need a vehicle. Right. We also need the sponsors to ensure that we are able mm. to deliver mm. the mm. things that we delivered for our, uh, our viewers. Okay. Yeah. Kwame, give me a typical day in a Gabon and Equatorial Guinea for you? Well, um, it, it more or less depends on where you are at a particular time. Mm. Um, for example, um, when we moved to you know, where the team was, we were told that the team was going to be based um, in a city called Franceville, and that's what, um, 630K mm. from Libreville. Okay. Now, you think um, the team is going to be, let's say if the team is in Accra, somewhere you know, just around the Accra. Yeah. Only for us to get to Libreville, and it takes between um 75 and 90 minutes depending on which car you're using just to get to the, where the team is now when you get there you know um the village it's more like a village the setting it's more like a village right. you see loads of houses there but you realize that most of these houses are not occupied the team is in a facility that was specifically built for you know the can you wake up and you're thinking what am i doing here but you need to get information you need to get you know stuff in here to ghana mm. You need, basically, for our job, you need internet, for example. There is only one internet facility in the whole of, you know, the town, and that's located in a team ho hotel. So you have to go there, mm -hmm. and you have to go there very early when the internet is pretty fast, okay. because there are so many other, All you right. know, people using the internet. Right. You go there early, maybe 4.30, 5.30, just to make sure that everything you worked on is sent and sent pretty quickly. Because if you don't do that, mm -hmm. it's going to take God knows how many hours. Now here we say we use like what, 3G or something that IT guys would say um, mm -hmm. to send um, the things that, you know, all this internet stuff. Mm -hmm. There, it will probably pass for God knows how many G. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's slow. Mm -hmm. But you just have to make sure, you know, things were, um, were, was done. The setting was quiet. Mm -hmm. um, someone would say it's very good for you know footballers to be in and be you know disciplined and stay focused but there are times where you're in there it's, it's, it's just too quiet mm. um you could literally count the number of people in you know the village for example um you didn't really see anything you had you know money if you wanted to buy food for example um you had the money but you couldn't really get anything to buy if you wanted to get you know any any anything you had to drive for something like 50k just to get you know get to somewhere good enough for you to get very basic things it, it was that interesting but for me it wasn't you know about these challenges it was about being in the past of the world where you're not too familiarized with the things that you see let's say in Accra, Kumasi, Tamale or wherever you are in Ghana it was something totally different and you know waking up and you know seeing something totally different was was interesting but did you science business in the air um, business, um, for me, may be relative in here because, for example, um, we've left Franceville. The facility that was put up for the national team, I'm told, was like $20 million, like the hotel. The, because if you look at the facility, it's um, a hotel in itself, um, a, a football pitch, stands, restaurants, so many other things right. put together. That's like, you know, 20 million. Mm. The people who live in that, you know, enclave, right. they're like, what, something under 500. They can't even afford to, you know, use some of these facilities. Mm. They're probably turning into white elephants mm. right now. But I recall um, something that was said by the president of the land, Omar Bongo, at a press conference that he had. And he was like, there are plants 
to make sure that all these facilities we think might turn into wild elephants to make sure that though they have you know a very small population 1.5 compared to Ghana's 24 million do they have that kind of small population their plans to make sure that all these things that they have expended so much money on will be used very very well as to whether that's going to happen maybe in the next few months in the next few years we'll have a, a fair idea of what gabon and equatorial guinea would want to do with all the millions of investments they made so mcben as a matter of fact when you talk about business and sports it's not so much the venue which is a point i was trying to raise earlier on and talking about proximity in time and space and it makes me actually believe that concept a lot more yeah. because probably there was more business in ghana and nigeria that was not participating than there was in equatorial guinea and gabon put together mm -hmm. <laughs> But like Kwame said, mm. you know, the post, you know, tournament mm. is one important thing that if Gabon decides that let's look at this infrastructure, for yes. example, they can sell the idea to foreign clubs or even other nations to come in, use that place as, you know, a campaign, you know, venue and stuff like off-season mm. campaign mm. activities. Mm. You know, so it's not just, okay, you have the infrastructure and you just use it for tournament, mm. but the fact that you'll be able to market it to other teams, clubs, and stuff like that for them to come. I mean, you may have a team like Manchester United. We've not been able to do that in Ghana. To, to Af Af Our local league is not even patronized in this beautiful Accra and Kumasi Stadium that we have. Let's say it's work in progress, but then the, the other point is, look, without cash or without investment, you can't develop sports. You know, some of these things, because the tournament, AFCON was coming in Ghana, or we were going to do AFCON in Ghana, then the um, government had to invest in it. Right. Apart from the fact that you know there's business in sports, brands associate with sports and other things, but what they also do is that they want investment that will give them immediate, okay. you know, returns. Right. If you're looking at the medium term to the long term, these are some of the things that we can invest in to you know develop you know our sports because here we are, we have our players resigning here and there. But what kind of investment are we making in the junior teams and all that? You know, there are a lot of sports colleges, sports schools. You know, Winneba. Pram, pram, and you know, it takes money, it takes a lot of investment to be able to build them up. Okay. But it's, it's, I think it's about time that we begin to look at investing in things that brings the creativity and the talent in our young ones. You know. Kwame, let me ask you. So, who went along with you to Gabon? I'm now trying to get an understanding of um, events as they unfolded on the ground. Who did you go with? What did they do? And how were you able to send those diaries anyway? Well, I went with uh, Mr. Modesto Zami. Um, he was uh, the cameraman. And then Mr. Gilbert Ampofo, mm -hmm. um, who happens to be, um, you know, the editor. Right. Um, it, was, it was more or less like, you know, you produce, um, the cameraman is with you, and then the editor works, you know, and I would have to, you know, um, you know congratulate Gilbert for, you know, um, the job that he did. I mm -hmm. think he put in um, a brilliant job because... The moment we shot something, yeah. what he did, um, he had, you know, all the gadgets that we needed, you know, um, the FTPs, um, how some of these things were even done. I personally have no idea. All right. that, you know, he would tell me is, Kwame, this is the finished product, good to go. Right. Um, can you just have a look at, you know, a few things? And then, you know, I send it to Ghana and I'm like, is it that simple? And it's like, well, that's why I'm here. So it comes to Ghana edited? <laughs> it comes to Ghana already edited. We do everything everything in Gabon or Equatorial Guinea. And we're moving around. And we the actually three of you? That's right. We actually got the opportunity to move to all the four, you know, cities that hosted the camp because Ghana played a match. Um, we didn't get to play in Libreville, right. um, which um, happens to be, you know, um, that for Group C and a few other matches. But, you know, you have to um, literally come through Libreville if you want to make, let's say, um, travel to Malabo, Bata, Franceville. Okay. So we, we almost always came through Libreville and okay. he did everything in Gabon. It was time consuming because sometimes you, you shot, let's say, two, three hours of stuff. He needs to sit down. We go through everything. Um, do this here, do this here. Take this thing out. Um, we can go tomorrow, do this. And he did everything there. And for me, it was, it, was, it was just great to see that, you know, all these things were being done. I mean, it's something that you've actually worked on. It wasn't a case of, you know, you shot a thing um, sent to Ghana by Korea or something and mm. then, you know, um, People in here wouldn't decide, okay, I think this is good to go. So by what means did you transmit these um, uh, pictures? We did that through um, FTP. 
Um, that's what my editor tells me. Um, what we, we, we had, you know, this interesting challenge because of, you know, how slow the internet could be okay. sometimes, right. um, depending on, you know, the time and the number of people using it, of mm. course. So um, there were times where we had to convert the footage. Mm. So um, our viewers should bear with us. There were um, some of the footage that looked a bit blurred. It ain't, it's not, you know, how it's supposed to be. But so you actually had to transfer the files that's via right. the internet. That's right. Because yeah, yeah. if you want to send it, you know, in the high definition, like right. we go to watch for, you know, Champions League, it would take a longer time so Even there are times you have to compress them and then you okay. know um, the quality might just drop a bit mm. so that you can send you know these ones faster because so we file transfer protocols FTP yeah okay. yeah we wanted you know every you know um, bit of you know information okay. uh, that we thought Ghanaians were you know messing I mean okay. it's not just about watching the football matches right. like my boss that say you get to see the uh, post-match press conferences, pre-match mix zone and you know all those things from international networks Absolutely. it wouldn't really make that much of a difference but what happens on the ground following the team everywhere they went to going to the town speaking to the local people about the tournament even the language was something else you met someone speaking French and Spanish and you're like what did I do to my French lessons in <laughs> primary school you know all, you know all those things well, you're absolutely right added. I mean we all watch the uh, live fight boxing a live football game i don't buy some of the leading papers in ghana because i also saw the game what are you going right. to tell me but i'm happy to go online and read the new york times because they will tell me what happened in the dressing room of the boxer afterwards that's how right. it was stitched the cut and all of that and those are things you don't really get to see because like you you're know? saying if, if you're on the ground okay yeah. it's a totally different thing sometimes you know when you go to the internet like you're saying you know one story um skewed towards so many different Absolutely. angles but when you are there yeah. and you send the footage to Ghana. I mean, as long as you have eyes and you can see, you can see what is happening. And for us, I think that's, you know, the difference that, you know, multi-TV made compared to what other TV stations Let me stations ask you a very quick did. question. Did you have difficulty having access to the Black Stars players and the officials? Um, it was um, a bit difficult at the onset, but I, I would want to use this platform to thank um, the FA officials, Mr. Jordan Nagla. You know, Chris Nyantichi is now um, a CAF executive member, right. so he was most of the time, you know, out doing CAF duties and all that. And then the new communications director, Mr. Sunny Dara, who gave us sometimes more than enough access, because oh. some of the things that we did, people were asking, I mean, did you just go into the team and you know did interviews at any time you wanted sometimes we had to of course we are journalists we would have to find our own way of you know putting things together but um, Mr. Anagbala, Mr. Sanidara we say thank you very much for giving us you know that much access to the team to you know bring to Ghanaians all that you know they saw during the Afghan period. Fred the Nations Cup is coming quicker than ordinarily anticipated it's yes. just next year what are the yes. plans what's going to happen this time? Um, I think uh, this, what happened in Gabon, Kutura Guinea, is just a dress rehearsal. Okay. What is going to happen next year? Uh, because uh, when, what we were planning, we also had that in mind that next year, because the calendar is being changed, right. next year, South Africa, they've taken over from Libya, I think. Yeah. It's going to be there. So definitely, whatever, we will not just do this big thing mm. and then let it ride. Mm. And I'm sure that um, other stations will try to kind of nip us in the bud. But definitely, what we went through in Gabon and Guinea, they don't know the half of it behind the scenes. We want to do behind the scenes, but it's behind the scenes, behind the scenes. <laughs> like that, that is our story to tell. Mm. Uh, there's a big brand that's one to five years old that has a secret recipe. Mm. It's never revealed. As what I said, it's, it's the truth or it's a myth. Nobody knows. But that's their trump card. We have our trump card. And definitely next year. The trade secret. The trade secret. Right. Next year is going to happen. Yeah. And I just wanted to chip this in. Even beyond what we, were, we did, you know, uh, Joseph Hansen mm -hmm. brilliantly hosted the Prima discussions with uh, brilliant panelists. And then Tony Bebley also did his own thing on Inside AFCON. Right. While Kwame and his team were there, okay. whenever the materials also came, okay. we needed an avenue to push it out. Be beyond the diaries, we're also using some of the materials on other programs. You know, including the prima discussion and then inside of right. So we actually stretched it out and ensured that everybody had a piece of the cake. There's a saying you know that... Hansen is a star in the making, you know that? I always of course, say. a rising star. Right. And Tony, <laughs> you know, Tony will sit on there and yeah. confidently deliver. Inside of Con, No doubt. Yes. And uh, let, me, let me be honest and say this. Look, we are the only TV station that can eat its cake and have it. I like that. You can, you can say anything. We can eat our cake and have it. We know the reason why. But we are not, we are not saying it. Mm. Interesting. McBen, what are the plans for more business and more sports, particularly South Africa 2013? 
And by the way, for those who don't know, uh, CAF has decided to change the calendar to all the years. That yeah. basically is the reason why it's not 2014 and it's 2013. Any plans in the future? Well, for us at Multi TV, we are in the business of um, offering thrilling TV experience to audi our audience. Right. And for that matter, we are bent on getting them good properties. There are big leagues that are coming up, which we are going for them. And um, for our businesses, what we do is that we create the platform, we create the community, the audience, and deliver them to advertisers. And then we, they, they exchange business values. Right. Now, we, I would specifically mention our sponsors for Afcon, <coughs> Rob, Stambic Bank, Guinness, Channel IT, Knet really gave us good service. In fact, they gave us enormous bandwidth to download the stuff that Kwame was bringing. You know, RLG, Africa Origin Travel and Tours, and Sports Tourism, they facilitated our sports travel, okay. you know, and all that. We really say big thank you for them. Right. And of course, um, the new big things that are coming up, we have Sports Today, which is a sports morning show that is coming up on Joy Sports. Oh, wow. We have the NBA, mm. which has already, you know, started showing. Then we have Formula One for the vehicle, fast moving, you know, uh, vehicle sports lovers. And uh, there are so many other, other things that are coming up in March, okay. especially, which we promise our viewers great experience. And of course, we give value to our sponsors as well. So, sports and business first choice, multi TV, I believe. Yes, it's Joy Sports on multi TV. Joy Sports on multi TV. Fred? We should be getting ready to go. I'll give you what, what will be your final words on this matter. Okay, um, just as Mark Ben has thanked our sponsors, I also want to deliver a heartfelt appreciation to this, uh, the viewers for staying with us. And I'm sure a lot of them stayed with us and never moved. But then also, I must also um, appreciate the fact that management decided to put up their faith in us mm. to send a team at a certain cost to Gabon. And then we hope we satisfied management, apart from satisfying our viewers and the sponsors. Right. Enough said that next year, when you are going to South Africa, I'm not saying if, when, they will send us there. Right. But one key thing is also the fact that um, all the producers, the technical men, everybody, Joe, Tony, who held, really held the fort, all the uh, guests who came on board, we just want to take this opportunity to thank everybody. Great. Kwame, yeah. you look, are you looking forward to going to South Africa? Well, I'm, I... <laughs> I would say yes, but <laughs> obviously that decision would not lie with me. Right. <laughs> it would lie with um, the two gentlemen um, seated by me. Right. Um, <laughs> as and when they call upon me, I'm sure I'll do my best like I did in Gabon and Equatorial Guinea. Great. McBen, you have the final word. Our stakeholders are happy, so the assurance is Kwame will go to anywhere he wants to go to give right. us the value. <laughs> but then my greatest thanks also go to my team, my sales team and the events manager also did a great job oh. with our, you know, um, claim to swim, the big screen experience, which is um, title of multi-TV. We take television out there for people. He did a great job. And of course, the entire multi-TV team and our sister stations as well supported us with some publicity. Yeah.